Hello! Welcome to episode 3 of the cutscene series. A playlist people seem to like so much, I've gotten complaints that we haven't already made more. I'll take it as a compliment. In the past, we've covered the likes of the Dead Island trailers and the opening to Sonic Unleashed, and my Discord has been popping off with all sorts of great suggestions. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Xenoblade Chronicles, Smash, Warframe, The World Ends With You, Lego Star Wars. Damn it, why did I think of that when it came out? And I definitely do want to cover these soon, but I'm going to veto them all for one more choice of my own own for a bit of variety between prompts. And because I'm trying to write this in a single day to build a backlog. Look, here I am today. That's the Bright Night 360. Anyway. Today we're touching Overwatch. Ugh, no, not the 2022 version. We're going back to the good old days of 2016. Whereby Blizzard was pushing the boundaries of game and cinema all the more by full-on releasing in-universe short films of some of their iconic characters, and focusing much less on harassing female workers with a frat boy atmosphere. I've been boycotting Overwatch myself since the Hong Kong controversies, but enough of the downfall of the company. This short from the golden era is just an amazing piece of fan service for those who want to see some lore, in a beautiful high quality sheen. And the last bastion has to be one of their best. Hitting 21 million views on YouTube, you can tell this one struck people in their hearts. For a hint of context for you unaware, this short covers the character of Bastion, a completely overpowered, unfeeling douchebag, but in the lore, he's the remnant of an old war against the machines, the last of his kind who somehow awake in modern day, but with a kind heart and affiliation for nature. And this short is his origin story. <laughs> And so we begin in the middle of some random forest. Beautiful strings, piano, and birdsong, slowly moving into place of the inciting incident. Looking off from the distance with the composition directing our eyes. The frame is surrounded by dark bushes, and in the center, a glowing landmark directly in the sunlight. The simplest ways to instruct audience eyes where to look. And as we get closer, the swifter movements of this bird catch our attention, readying us for the cut closer to it. Doing its natural thing of building a nest. Just nature at peace. Until it starts pecking at some moss, the camera panning in parts to slowly reveal the moss's true identity. It's Bastion, of course. A point of view shot to suggest that this unearthed thing has a perspective at all. And some great diegetic sound, feeling more impactful because it's literally a wake-up call. And then we get the POV again, now with its robotic UI accompanying its vision. It's a robot! And hey, those two logos are its two abilities, reconfigure and self-repair. And with a simple cue, we can see it's fully activated, music now getting more complex, scaring the bird away and pulling us back for a moment to see the mound that Bastion has become over time. And now it's time for action. Those shots of mossy nature now becoming mechanical movements, as Bastion takes his first steps in modern day. But not in a destructive, unempathetic way, it almost seems gentle, magical. And as the bird comes flying back with curiosity, Bastion jitters out a reaffirming view of his own hand, and his gun, and the bird. Gotta also love how in this perspective shot, they mimic the idea that Bastion has a fisheye lens for an eye, so the peripherals of his vision are distorted. Also blurred like peripheral vision. And of course, scan lines overlaid too classic. The bird now sings above and distant, the subject of the frame for being the point of intrigue, turning its head in curiosity, which Bastion does the same. A moment of mutual interest, and all matched to the build-up of the music. <laughs> But then, Directive comes in. Bastion's overlay is invaded with a map of the region and a route to his destination, obscuring the bird from his attention, and then mapping it into augmented reality, a peek into Bastion's programming. Cool. And panned far away from our little yellow fledgling. And so, Bastion goes. Seen with a low angle as he's empowered with functionality again. Yet his strides aren't perfect, walking with a jiggle like an organic creature. The world around him, a spectacle of nature. And Bastion is noticing. <laughs> His feet are on a mission, but his head is observing, looking up to the sunlight through a passing tree, which the short uses as a nice view as well as a transition, blooming the lights out to we're full white and taking us some distance further. Here, nature is still continuing to be a marvel with great tree log pathings, not unlike something in Pikmin in my nostalgic brain. Huge and encapsulating, sun beaming from the top and Bastion just a tiny piece in the grand scheme of things. And deer, a new spectacle for Bastion to ponder over. Though it's not a very good deer, pretty sure it would skedaddle the moment Bastion looked at it, especially if it knew any better. 
fade to our next moment, another indicator of time and distance passing, much better than a simple cut. Now showing us rain on a leaf. It's a simple idea, but again, hitting on that theme that nature is beautiful. One of those classic images that resonates a kind of tranquility in humans, and similarly to Bastion. And with a robotic replica to this experience, Bastion's hand does the same thing, releasing a not too different vibe of tranquility we humans feel with urban rain. You know what I mean? Even in a city, rain could be satisfying with the way it rattles against metal piping, or against the asphalt of roads. Apparati can be beautiful too. I mean, it's to the point that this was my desktop background for a while. A fantastic merging of the two in misty rain. By the way, more cutscenes will be covered, so check if you're subscribed. And the bird hops onto the frame, surprising both of us, as Bastion mimics that head turn once again. A natural reaction, or an attempt of communication? Also, have you noticed yet that nary a line of dialogue has been spoken? And that will continue throughout this entire short. I always love this approach, making it universal to all audiences and leaning heavier on the emotion of any moment as the animation has to do the talking. The bird can only tweet, or I guess only chirp, and Bastion only hums. Beautiful. And the bird uses Bastion's hand as both a drinking opportunity and for that asmr -y goodness, detouring Bastion entirely, as this build-up of experiences has convinced him to step off his beaten path. We next see him playing with nature, a reflection shot of him against the water, bird sitting safely on his head as he taps himself. <laughs> willing to learn the sensations of the world around him, and curious of all of life's moving parts. And in this new lifestyle, a clarinet has joined the accompaniment. More layers of audible peace. <laughs> learning of all of life's moving parts. Shocking. And eventually being a source of comfort for even the most gentle of creatures, a hub for butterflies is proof of a good heart. And that age-old quest of the bird building its nest comes back again. Same motif too. Built in the safety of Bastion's presence that even he is willing to assist with, aware of the affair going on. And the final stick to complete said nest. <laughs> Who'd have thought Overwatch was gonna dip into PTSD territory? You don't need me to tell you a woodpecker can sound like gunshots. And strikes Bastion like a rush of adrenaline. The butterflies scattered, birds circling as Bastion looks around anxiously. The music shredding to a single droning note. Camera turning around him too and tactically using this tree to cut to him closer as the tension builds towards this invisible enemy. Audibly, the peckings are echoed in the forest, feeling more like distant gunshots. And then... Bastion's view is shown with a dolly zoom into the endless forest, the vision distorting as his grip and reality loosens to the fear of danger. The lighting also darkening into more shadows as life gets less pretty for a moment. Pre-tree, he's in the light. Post-tree, it's overcast. This time closer, camera rotating onto the point, the perfect storm of coincidence to propel our plotline further. <laughs> First, it's its entire face turning from blue to red, an easy cue to follow, showing us multiple angles of his transformation, urgent and happily shredding moss in his destructive, directive focused ways, far different from the initial wake up, spraying bullets from his perspective in any general direction. And it's suddenly so much louder than the rest of this short. What a shock to the system. It's as a YouTube comment said, it's like a fight or flight response built into the program, but all it can choose is fight. A tragedy of a character trait to push against his personality. And just like that, entire tree stumps, decades old, are ripped to shreds at an instant. Some frames even looking like an impact frame from the lighting glowing within the tree before beaming through the bullet's trail. The camera now shaking along with Bastion to really feel the energy of the moment in this lapse of judgement. No music. A disaster still minuscule when compared to the entire scale of this landscape. Is it just a cliche shot of birds scattering or meaning something more? That Bastion is so trapped, completely lost or that nature is still beautiful and there's plenty of room for Bastion to grow amongst this land of comforts. And we see Bastion transmute back to his former self. The red in his eyes switch to blue as he looks at himself in shock. A real human emotion. As we are given this heart-wrenching shot of what remains of Ganymede's nest. Yes, its name is Ganymede. Dropped on the ground amongst a spray of used bullet casings. Only a single yellow feather remains. 
and as Bastion looks around for his little yellow friend, his shoulders slowly droop as he's left alone in the grey shadows of the forest, framed within broken tree logs and slowly descending leaves, and he deflates. Real human sadness at what he has just done. I know what'll fix this. Yeah, let's give him a hat in five years' time. Sorted. <laughs> And with nothing of this world here for him anymore, he resorts back to his prime directive, somberly and slowly making his way. Clouds changing again from overcast to blue as we get a map teaser for the upcoming Iconworld. And as he steps down the hill and out of the forage, he comes to a standstill. There it is. The destination of his original goal. Not doomed amidst war, but almost angelically placed. Beaming sun, blue skies, and an endless green field. Staring at Bastion from such a distance away. Asking him if he's willing to leave behind his own natural wonderland. And he does. Composited so fantastically here, he is literally stepping out into the unknown. A heavenly looking void. Leaving behind his prior experiences. Look how much of the frame this takes up. He turns back nostalgically toward the forest giving another one of those sneaky focus pulls to follow his eyeline. Stopped in the center of his big decision, no destination on either ends of the frame. Surrounded by the beauty of this field, he finds... himself. Changing the context of this field, it's not so perfect. And from this higher angle, we can finally see it's littered with the remains of his fellow kind. The expand of the field not clean, but emblematic of the scale of damage done here. So he checks on its memories. His LED eye blinking as it processes the information as the camera match cuts us back to the past and bash in its observer. <laughs> Suddenly, highlights are darkened as the sky looms red, Bastion still blinking like a human does when it's trying to take it all in, and we're back to uncomfortable loudness with missiles flying overhead, panning us to the middle of the Omnic Crisis. Explosions light up the battlefield as hundreds of Bastions march on, the camera handheld and zooming like the videographers on the field as a Reinhardt-like guy swings his fire strike through several bots. And in response, we see Bastion's ult. Of course, our Bastion wasn't going to use it, so it had to be shown elsewhere. Laying out into tank mode, or just turret mode again? Tank mode's probably back there somewhere, and in retaliation, the Crusaders bring out their shields. This whole war scene is all just one shot, panning back and forth as each element responds to each other, keeping your eyes on the action at all times. It could also easily be hiding cuts and it swishes to the side if it wasn't an animation already. There are millions of foot soldiers, giant robot mechs, jets flying over past, and capping it off with one final angle back to Bastion. Tilting down to him and moving closer as his army pushes on on either side of him. Motion rattled in its handheld, almost running perspective. Bastion still blinking viciously away before match cutting back to reality. Surprising him once more in his blue form before activating him for duty in his red form. His stance straightening up as he loses his organic influences and now, empowered with perfect mechanical strength, he locks and loads his gun and begins the trek to continue the war. That goofy, jiggly gait he had before now rescinded to perfect machinery footsteps. Okay, there might be a hint of a jiggle there still. But his mind is made and he will prevail against this blue and green void. And as he steps, we see the sky's shadows literally clouding over his judgment. But from up here, a familiar friend can appear. Ganymede, he's not dead. Fluttering down onto Bastion's gun with the optimism of starting again from the beginning on that nest. It's enough to stop Bastion in his place as he contemplates his decision. Literally stopped halfway as he has to pick a side. A life to lead. The comfort of nature or the directive of war. This is another one of those desktop backgrounds I nabbed back in the day. <laughs> He pulls the first stick to his weird one-eyed face, looks at his shoulder before returning to his blue-eyed self, of course. He's made his decision. And it's 
the whole some ending for the both of them. And as Ganymede circles around Bastion, he keeps up with just his top half before being completely distracted away from the city that supposedly calls him. Not even looking back as he returns to the forest, bird on hand, happy to start a new life in the woodland expanse. The camera climbs up, gives us one last view of the lands, a final poke that nature truly is beautiful, and on a harsh cut to black, in memory of Yvonne Nebro, a fellow animator at Blizzard who died in a motorcycle accident, with a pretty fantastic showreel under his belt. Wow, what a beautiful send-off. This, in my mind, was Overwatch at its peak, and though I'm very much not a fan of the franchise or the company, they've really been digging themselves a bigger hole over the years, I can still appreciate the art that goes into some of this stuff. I was certainly hooked back in the day, and nowadays I stick to a weird niche. I'm not interested in Overwatch 2, but I'll think back fondly of the good old days, and try to avoid sending them money going forwards. Screw Overwatch. But also, I loved you, Overwatch. Anyway, for now, my name's been Daz. Let me know any other cutscene suggestions over on our Discord. You didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. In a beautiful, high-quality sheen, nature is beautiful. Beautiful strings, apparati can be beautiful too. What a beautiful sender. <laughs>